Hey, good morning. Let's see here. Let me press all the buttons, make sure that we are up and streaming live on Facebook. And now we are live officially on YouTube. Hey, welcome to the live stream. Happy Monday. I hope you had a great uh, Friday. I hope you're looking forward to an exciting week ahead. I know I am. In what way? I'm not sure exactly how, I'm not sure, but I'm confident that something exciting, a thing or two will happen. Um, I wanted to, uh, you know, Friday we have, as we do every Friday morning, we have our Friday morning Q&A. And so what I wanted to do was I grabbed, I grabbed to extend that a little bit and that I grabbed, uh, I wasn't able to get to all the questions on Friday. So I grabbed one that I thought had some broad interest within those of us who record voiceovers. And I will address that this morning. But as you check in this morning, hey, David, uh, make sure to say hi in the live stream here on YouTube. Let me know who you are, where you're listening or watching from this morning. It's always exciting to see you guys check in. And this morning I brewed some um, just medium roast Dunkin' Donuts. Coffee, <laughs> that is. I don't make my own donuts, but wouldn't that be fun? And I say I brewed it. I <clears throat> That's stretching it a little bit. It's actually, it's Keurig. So what I do, my routine in the morning is um, I grind... Uh, I, I brew a pot of coffee for for Vicky, well, for Vicky and me, and usually it's uh, <clears throat> it's the Meyer Michigan cherry. So I did that, you know, grind up the beans and I brew that, and then I just make me a quick cup of Keurig. I had that set up the night before, and then I just brew me a quick cup of Keurig, so I don't have to wait for it to get on because usually I'm running at the last minute or a few minutes late in the morning because I'm not really a, a morning riser. Uh, I mean, I can and I used to. For a living when I was working morning radio, but it's just not my favorite thing to do. Uh, let's see here. Let's see who's checking in this morning. Patricia from Buffalo, New York. Yay. Hey, Tim in North Texas. Good morning to you. Danny in San Diego, one of the most beautiful cities I've ever visited. Tom in Pittsburgh. Bruce, Louisville, what's up? Maricia. Um, Good morning to you. Jama from Nigeria, good morning. Kay in Missouri. Adam in Lexington. Oh, what, in the North Carolina area? Okay. Uh, excuse me, I'm um, really struggling with uh, my throat this morning. <clears throat> So we've got uh, Adam uh, mentioned that, and we've got, uh, oh, good morning from Southwest Virginia. Good morning. Lithuanda, Johannesburg. Yes, good morning. JJ, Indianapolis. Janet, Fleming Island, Florida. Grim from Northern Kentucky. I hope you are doing well. Um, of course, uh, all the folks in Kentucky right now in our thoughts and prayers. What a terrible thing that happened last week in regards to the flood. It's... Um, it's it's unimaginable. Uh, I'm so sorry. Luke in Venice, Florida. Bruce, happy mo motivational Monday. Yes, indeed. That's a good. I like I like your attitude. I like your your perspective. Hey, Cecil, what's up? In Homewood, Illinois. Sandy in Philadelphia. I heard, heard your Phillies uh, did a pretty good job yesterday, if I recall correctly. And uh, Waniku from Kenya. I hope I pronounced that right. If not, please forgive me. Okay, so our topic this morning is this, how to manage long voiceover scripts. Have you ever wondered if you are working as efficiently as possible, or I think a mistake a lot of people make is they, is they worry that um, they're not, you know, they think that there's a standard in terms of how long you should be able to record without taking a rest. And and that kind of thing. And there really isn't. And that's maybe that's the first thing I should say is don't compare yourself to anybody else. Um, the reality is the more long voiceover scripts you record, the stronger your um, endurance is built, the muscles, the diaphragm, and everything else that goes into it, because it's a, it's a physical thing. And just like training and running or walking long distances, the longer you do it, the longer you can go, but that's not even the issue, how long you can go. It doesn't, 
In my opinion, it doesn't it doesn't matter. But let me back up a little bit. Let me talk about what I do with the script, and then let me talk about the actual physicality of it and how I manage that. Uh, a couple things that I do to make it easier for me. Number one, and I think I mentioned this in an earlier video, maybe a month or so ago, and that is I make the font smaller. Not so small that I can't see, obviously, but I make it small enough that I can still read it. Uh, but with it being smaller, I don't have to scan as much. I can see within my within the my view, I can see more words. So it helps me to keep from you know scanning back and forth or going yeah from one end of the line over here to the other, um, and seeing fewer words within my field of vision. The more I can see, the fewer mistakes I make. It makes it easier for me. So. And I guess I, the caveat here should be just because it works for me and makes it easier for you doesn't necessarily mean it will make it easier for you. Uh, but I would recommend trying it out uh, because, uh, and it makes sense to me. I mean, the less you have to do this back and forth on the page, the easier it's going to be to read. Um, I, I take my time, generally speaking, unless it's something that's required that I read fast. I think one of the biggest mistakes of of talent when it comes to these long scripts is they generally speaking, read too fast. Take your time. Consider it a leisurely stroll through the park. You know, um, by doing that, it may seem that it's taking you longer, but the reality is you'll make fewer mistakes. You'll become, uh, you won't become as fatigued as quickly. It will be less stressful and it will be more enjoyable. You'll sound better. And, um, and usually the sl slower is better typically on longer uh, narration scripts that are most most of the time, longer scripts are either, I mean, it could be a book where you're telling stories, or it could be instructional in nature, informative, and those almost are always better when they're done taking your time. So make the, try making the font smaller. Again, that works very well for me. See if it works well for you. And then I make the, the, the margins wide in my document. So I'm, I'm shrinking the words. And then I'm making the margins wider so that the column is narrower because that keeps me, again, I'm trying to avoid this when I'm reading, going back and forth in wide, you know, wide strokes back and forth because it's easier to lose your place and lose the train of thought. Whereas if I can just see it in front of me, the more words I can see, the better. And the less that I have to go back and forth, the better. So the smaller column, that helps me out tremendously. For starters, um, and then the 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 way I manage the physicality of it because it is physical. At least it is for me. You know, if I'm reading a two thousand word script, for me that's that's not a big deal. And maybe even you know five thousand words, which is a half hour. Um, you know, I hardly break a sweat on that. But if you're doing, I just finished a project that was twelve thousand five hundred words. So that's you know, and again, it's relative. You know, 500 words for you might be a struggle right now. So just, again, I'm not trying to, don't compare yourself to anybody, but the, the point, you know, the point is that the more you do this, the, the better that you'll get at that. But don't compare yourself to anybody. It doesn't matter. So the way I manage that is, because people ask me all the time, well, how long do you read before taking a break? Well, I read until I get tired. And it's different on different days. There's some days I may go a half hour, 45 minutes, and um, maybe that's pushing it a little bit for me. But it's not that big of a deal. There are some days where that just feels impossible. Uh, just like when I used to I used to run a lot in my younger days. And there were, there were days where I felt like I could run forever. And then there were days I would start off and I would realize that, you know, to get in three or four miles, that's going to be a push for me. You know, I'm just not feeling it today. So it's the same thing with voiceover. It can change from day to day for a number of reasons. I mean, we're, we're human beings. We're the way we're wired. Um, the way we're created, it's just, you know, some days tend to function better than others. So my, my approach, my strategy is to read until I'm tired. Um, because once you start to fatigue, then that's when you start to make more mistakes. Uh, your, the client will be able to hear that in your voice. You start to get tired. You sound tired. So as soon as I start to feel tired, I stop. And then what I do is I go back and edit what I've just recorded. For me, that's being efficient. So let's say I've just recorded five pages of a script and I feel like, oh, geez, I'm, you know, this is a real uh, drag and I just don't feel like I can just keep 
pushing through this. And maybe it's because the script is difficult too. It could be a number of reasons, but for what, whatever the reason, I'll stop. I'll go back. I'll edit what I just recorded. And then I'll read again until I start to feel fatigued. Um, and then I'll edit what I just did. So I record, stop, and my resting is editing um, for me. And that way that I'm, I'm efficient in what I do. And if that's not enough time for me to rest, the time that it takes to edit, then I'll get up and I'll get another cup of coffee or I'll stroll in and bug my wife and see what she's up to, or I'll let the dogs out in the backyard to go to the bathroom or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, so don't compare yourself to somebody else. You know, work within yourself, but what you'll find is the more you do it, and the, the uh, easier it becomes, the longer you'll be able to go. But again, it's not a race. It doesn't really matter. I think what's more important is how you manage the time that you're actually doing the work. And those are the strategies that work for me. Make the font smaller, make the margins wider, and then I read until I start to feel fatigued, whether it's five minutes or 45 minutes. And then when I do feel tired or fatigued, I go back and I edit what I've just recorded and rest my voice. And then, uh, and then I get right back to it afterwards. So that's how I manage it. I would uh, highly recommend that if you're, if, you know, if you're struggling with, with long scripts, try it and see what works for you. Keep what works and throw out what doesn't for you. Okay, let's see here. Well, we've got Scott in Little Elm, Texas. Hey, Robin in New York City. How are you this morning? Thank you for your kind words. You're very welcome. Hey, Mar uh, Mauricio. We got John in Florida. Is there something I, I drink to warm up my vocals? Yeah, coffee. That's that's what I drink. There are people who say, oh, I'll never drink caffeinated drinks. Well, I mean, again, you have to find out what works for you. But I've been drinking coffee for many, long before I started recording voiceovers. And um, it's it's the uh, the juice that keeps me going. Uh, it, it's It's my warm beverage of choice. Oh, hey, Dory, what's up? Doug in Greensboro, North Carolina. What a beautiful place. Hey, John. Let's see here. Hey, Carl. Hey, thanks for the kind words. I appreciate that. Riley in Texas, what's up? Just got his first gig to produce narration for an audiobook. That's Riley. Congrats. That's a big deal. Way to go. And by the way, Carl is never uh, green, Colorado. Um, and, and back to the long script thing. Do I read it before I record it? No, I typically don't. Um, once you've done this long enough, and if your if your um, technique is right, and when I say technique, I mean if you're not rushing through a script. Unless it's just uh, highly technical, you'll probably find it not all that necessary. If I'm doing, actually, I have a, I think a longer, like a 90-minute session schedule later today. It's over Source Connect with the studio out in the East Coast. And um, it's, I don't, I don't know exactly what it is, but it has something to do with, you know, it's corporate internal employee training type stuff. I'll look through that just to make to see if there's any words or terms that I need the client to uh, clarify for me. But I don't, yeah, I don't feel a need to read the entire script. I'll look at it to get an idea, but that's about it. GM from Atlanta, Jennifer and Marion, Illinois. And let's see here. How old was I when I started my career, my voiceover career? I was older than 21, but younger than 50. I was, let me think, I guess, oh, wow, I got to think about that. I was 46. Is that right? Yeah, I was 46 years old when I started my voiceover career. And not that I hadn't, I had worked in radio before that, so I'd recorded commercials, but I mean, it wasn't, it's, that's a different animal than voiceover. Um, so I, but I started my full, my full time voiceover career when I was 46. 
Hey, Suzette, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. All right, John in Washington, D.C. We've got Jim in Florida. Okay, awesome. Hey, thanks, guys, for the comments and uh, all the encouraging words. And uh, glad you could join me for this Motivational Monday. I like it. I like it. So go out there and make something good happen today. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow morning. And we'll talk to you then. Have a good one.